Bonjour, fan formula. Um, I'm back to being by myself in my lovely humble abode. Um, this week after last week's crazy um fa group fan formula, um, at a train station waiting room <laughs> with CJ. Um, so this one's going to be a little bit more tame. I apologise. Um, but first, I'd like to introduce you to. Bez, here he is. Um, he's CJ's new boyfriend, um, and he is um he's very very well house trained. Um, a little bit scary, but he's house trained, which which is good. He helps me with the hoovering and the washing up. So, um, yeah, meet Bez. He's going to be in future fan formulas and future group ones with um CJ. So. Look forward to them. Also, before I get started, um, after last week's F1 in pubs, it came out that I need a new way to open my fan formulas because my openings are a bit, you know, not very good. Um, so if you have any new and exciting ways that I could open my fan formulas with instead of hello or bonjour or whatever and please answers on a postcard but make sure they're clean and appropriate for the time of day because I do not record my fan formulas after 11 o'clock. So <laughs> with that let's get going with this week's questions. Right um question one. Um, I think these days getting into Formula One isn't about the potential that you have, it's more about how big your wallet is and how many sponsors you have behind you. Kind of realistically, the driver that could get a seat in Formula One is probably Jules Bianchi. You know, he, he does have that advantage over all the other drivers who tested at Magna Go. Um, because he's had he's had a lot of free practice sessions this season already with Force India, plus he's part of the young driver programme at Ferrari. Um but so I don't think it will be too long until we see him with a permanent race seat. I have no idea where it'll be it'll be interesting if he replaced Massa. Um Well, would it be interesting? Or would it be stupid by Ferrari? I don't know. Um but, but yeah, <laughs> there we go. Um, I think Hartley Gonzalez, I think that's how you pronounce his name, sorry if it's not, um, Bird Ragon and Razzia, you know, they haven't had any free practice sessions this season. I don't think they have anyway. Well, from that I can remember, if they have, then they clearly don't make an impact on me. But no, I don't, I don't think they did do any free practice. Anyway, um... So, so yeah, so th that's why they didn't have much uh, practice. <laughs> um, but I don't think Razzia and Gonzalez do have a chance. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not good enough to race in Formula 1 because, you know, Louis Razzia is, you know, really good in GP2. Um, but, you know, Force India were, were the only team that decided to give them a chance to test in the Young Driver programme and they were having to, like, swap it round with... Jules Bianchi and those two um so I don't think they'll be able to kind of share the testing role at Force India if Jules Bianchi was to leave and if he did get a permanent race seat it's not making not making sense at all if you can follow then top effort um now with Sam Bird is he the reserve driver kind of slash third driver at Mercedes or is he a development driver you know I'm I've I have no idea all these different titles are confusing, but I doubt that we'll be seeing him racing in Formula One um, if the um, rumours are true that Lewis Hamilton is going to Mercedes, then, you know, he won't he won't have a chance because I know Lewis Hamilton won't want to give up his seat in free practice if he moves to to Mercedes. Um, yeah, and that will be the same with Brandon Hartley as well because he has... He has a link with Mercedes and a link with Red Bull, so I I don't know where that will where that will go with him. But I think he races in 
be racist in something else, but I don't, I don't know what. So. Um, and with David Ragon, is that how you pronounce his name? Um, you know, he wasn't able to deliver as well as Jules Bianchi did in the Ferrari, so I can't really say much more about him. I doubt Ferrari will stick him somewhere anytime soon. So, <sighs> there we go. Right, um, question two. Um, I love the idea for this auction for Great Ormond Street Hospital, but I did think that the drivers could have taken better photographs. Um, for example, right, Johnny Eric Vern's photo of Franz Toss, you know, was lovely, you know, having a bit of love for your team principal. Um, but what would have made more money at an auction for charity would have been a topless photo of Jean Eric Vern. I know I would have bid, and there are plenty of ladies out there who, and maybe guys, you never know, who like a little bit of Jev action in their lives, and you know, topless photos are the way to go. So come on, drivers, it's for charity. They should do like a instead of calendar girls, it should be calendar boys, and it should just be lots of naked drivers, which is not a bad thing, is it, Bez? Yeah. Yeah, he likes it. He's smiling. He he wants it. Get Bez is on board. He's all on board. Right. Um, going through all the photos, I think, I think some of them are, are really really lovely. Like I loved Felipe Massa's photo of Rob Smedley. Um, he obviously understood the message that he that Rob Smedley has a huge fan base because he is just awesome. Um, I loved Franz Tost's um, photo just because of the two gorgeous men that were in it. Um, and what was with Kimi Raikkonen's photo? Was it of a car park or something? He was clearly drunk when he took that photo. Um, I was kind of disappointed with Lewis Hamilton. I thought he would be kind of with his homies. Uh, um, so I was kind of disappointed with that one. That was a letdown. Um, which other one was really good? Oh, I love Sebastian Buemi's of the beach. It was just very tropical and lovely. And Sebastian Vettel's as well of the Austrian mountains. That was, that was really nice as well. Um, but the best one had to be Sergio Perez's, uh, cute, adorable bulldog. You know, I love my bulldogs. And the dog is just the cutest thing ever. I I mean, can you still bid on them or have they already been sold? Because I will place a bid and have that dog in my home. Well, the photo of the dog anyway, not the actual dog. But if Sergio Perez wants to bring his dog round, we can have a little kind of like play date with the dogs and it will just be, it'll just be a maze balls. So yeah, Sergio Perez, if you're watching, we can have a play date with, with our bulldogs. How cute would that be? Um, <laughs> right. Um, question three. Um, with McLaren, I don't know. I mean, didn't this happen last season? They were awful at the start. and But then by the second half of the season, they got their act together. And, um, and they were kind of good towards the end. But it was, it was too late because they were rubbish at the start. And everyone was kind of miles ahead of them. And then they kind of leveled out. Whereas McLaren kind of went down, then up, then leveled out. So, um... But kind of with Monza and the, and Spa, um, I just think they got lucky. Obviously, in Monza, both Red Bulls retired and Jensen retired. And um, Alonso didn't have a great qualifying session. So he was kind of way down the pack. I think if um, Alonso hadn't had a rubbish qualifying session, he would have been up there racing with Lewis and... Sergio Perez if there were more laps in the if there were a couple more laps then he would have been up there as well so I just think they they were lucky um someone was definitely counting their stars for that race um but I just don't think the team are consistent enough to get the championship back I mean they never had it in the first place but hey ho um when was the last time they won a constructors was nine it's got to be 90 years nine is it 1997, 99? Something like that. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I think these next flyaway races are going to be really crucial for the team because they have got all this kind of drama with um, <laughs> um not Sebastian Bell, I'm kind of thinking. Um 
with Lewis and I think that will kind of distract them because uh, obviously all the media are making up all these rumours or if they're true or whatever um, so I think their main focus is that and I think they're going to kind of drift away from the fact that they're actually racing for a championship and at the end of the day the Constructors' Championship is more important than whether or not a driver is going to stay so we clearly know where McLaren's priorities lie Um. I mean, they may be able to balance all this drama out with um, consistent point scoring finishes, but, you know, they may prove me wrong, but at the moment, it's not looking likely, likely. and um, I think this whole kerfuffle with Lewis Hamilton is just going to get to them, but we'll have to wait and see. There's still 10 weeks to go, so I think they should just leave Lewis Hamilton's contract and whatever until after the season because that's not really important. They've got, what, all of December, January, whatever, part of February to get a contract sorted. So so be it, do it then. Don't do it in the middle of the season. Come on, come on, what are you thinking? Right, Um. bonus question. Um. Yeah, it's another Formula 1 race. Of course I'm looking forward to Singapore. It's the bonus that it's at night time is, is great. You know, the cars look stunning in in the floodlights of the circuit. Um, but is it, I, is it overhyped? I've never heard of it being overhyped. Obviously, um, at, when it first came onto the calendar and it was like, oh my God, it's the first ever night race in Formula 1. Oh my God. Then it was hyped, but I don't think it's hyped now. If it is, then... People keep quiet about it. Um, so, yeah. Are you excited about it, Bez? Yeah. Yeah. Bez is excited about it. But it's not overhyped. So, you know, at, at, the end, at the end of the day, whatever happens during this weekend will go towards um, deciding the champion, both championships. Um, so, it's it's just another race. It's not, it's not overhyped. It's it's nothing so right um kind of rabbited on a little bit in this fun formula I apologize it's not as not as long as Dom's and Vicky's but hey ho um I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you've enjoyed Bez Bez's company um I'm sure he will be back for for many more fan formulas um now he's not camera shy and he's stopped creeping me out a bit because at first he is really creepy when he just stands there and lurks behind doors. It's creepy. But yeah, there we have it. Fun formula is done. Enjoy. I'm going to put it onto YouTube and you can have it for your viewing pleasure. So um, I'll see you all next week. Enjoy Singapore, um, the overhyped race. And... Um, I'll see you all next week for next week's installment. So, au revoir, arrivederci. Bye. <laughs>